Good morning everyone. Welcome back to Studio Lou. It's Cindy and today I'm getting started on a new journal. I've been really inspired by this adorable children's book Terry and the Caterpillars by Millicent E. Selsom, um, illustrated by Arnold Lobel. And so it's a really sweet book, you know, about a little girl who has um, kind of gone on that journey of a caterpillar turning into um, a butterfly. The book is from 1962 and I just really love the um, illustrations to it. I would read it to you but it's a considerably longer book despite being a more junior reader. So essentially she brings home a caterpillar, she feeds it leaves, um, you know like a lot of kids do. She finds a few more, she sort of um, <clears throat> learns about the life of a caterpillar, she takes it to school, um, and then the chrysalis forms and, you know, they follow it through to becoming a moth. And um, it's just a really, whoopsies, that's my alarm, sorry. Okay. <laughs> So then, you know, she's very inspired by the little butterfly or moth. Um, and then they let the moth go, I think, or it escapes. Yeah. They have a little birthday party. It's a very cute, like, story, you know, about basically like a coming of age of a moth and um, how this little girl kind of grows along with the moth. Um, yeah, so it's all about, you know, the, the fascinating life of butterflies and moths. So that is something that I think could be a really fun journal. I really just like the illustration styles, so I will probably keep some of the pages. Um, I was trying to decide if I wanted to use the actual book as the cover and at first I thought nah because I, I don't want all this on the front I want to make it kind of a you know a calm front so I thought I would cut this away and then I would have a nice you know thick book plate kind of book board that I could mount on another vintage book but now I have a different idea um, that I want to maybe collage the bottom with some hand dyed paper in kind of a grassy um, like a grassy looking way and I might do a couple other things with <clears throat> fabric or yarn I haven't fully decided but I've now committed that I want to use this book so that's what we're going to do the first thing that I want to do though um I think is just kind of check if this is yeah that's all the natural color I'm just sort of looking I just kind of examine books for any kind of crayon marks or anything like that I don't think this one has one any any crayon marks so <clears throat> now I'm just going to kind of go in and take a look at how the binding is so this is one of these kind of bindings that has a whole bunch of little strings here so what I want to do I'm not going to be using the spine but I don't want to destroy the pages so I'm just going to go through and kind of cut these <clears throat> and I'm cutting toward the book rather than toward the paper because if I do, you know, cut anything, I don't mind if I cut the book itself because I'm not going to use the spine. I need to build a bigger spine to get all sorts of fun pages in here. Okay, so we've got all the strings, I think. Yep. Then I'll flip back to the back here and this should kind of slide. These should slide off, but they could also be glued. I may also have to um, cut this side. We'll see. The drawback of this particular book is it has kind of a delicate paper. So I'm just going to go in and cut the strings on this side as best I can here. There we go. That's feeling a little more open. And I have definitely cut the spine apart, but that's okay because we're not using the spine. Now I think I probably can pull. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So now here's the book. Um, so I'm going to be cutting this away anyhow. We're not going to use that. So 
So let's get started with that, actually. I should grab, I'll just use my ruler, that's fine. Let's see where this gets soft, which is right here. There's our back cover. Just kind of feeling where the edge of the bookboard is, making sure that I've aligned it. Okay, there we go. And then I can keep this aside because I may end up using it for something. I may, you know, grab a little snippet of it and put it on something. But there's the front board as well. I'm just going to snip away this little bit of the flypaper. And then I'll see if actually this will pull up because I want to tear off this, any of this that wants to pull up because I'm going to put some nice page, um, a nice page on top of it. It's actually really well glued down. I don't think I'll need to pull up a lot of it actually. And it's holding that nice, um, that nice seam right there. It's holding that down. So when I put my paper over it, I'm going to go a little further than this and I'm going to just make sure that that little paper flap seam there is really well glued down. <clears throat> and then on this side, this one doesn't need to be peeled up at all. It's also very, very nice. The book's in great condition, actually. Very nice condition. And I could probably stay to just grab a little more off here on this side. Yeah. I just want to trim it right up to the bookboard. I don't want any of that excess soft paper on the side. There we go. That's better. And then we'll just kind of come back over on this side, cutting away from the book. There we go. And I'll probably, <clears throat> pardon me, give that a bit of a sand. <clears throat> huh, I don't know why I have such a raspy voice today. I'm, I don't know. Okay, so that is the cover. Now, um, I will probably use, I have a bit of bookboard spine here, so I will maybe just measure a piece of this now. So yeah, this would be pretty good. I think I'll give this um, a two inch spine. So I'm going to cut it off on this guillotine here. out of the way. Hold on. Okay. There we go. And then we'll line this up and just kind of mark right there. I can actually just cut that with scissors. So now we have the base for our spine. Perfect. So then yeah, now I'll figure out the way that I want to decorate that spine before I determine how I'm going to be um, attaching it. The way I'm going to attach it though, well, you know, on the inside I'm going to be using cheesecloth and um, some nice, um, probably a good Teflon tape um, to, to really make it strong. But now I think what I'll do is I'll take a look at these um, pages and see how, if I can get them apart, hopefully I can. It looks like there is sort of a flypaper section and then two, maybe two signatures and they will pull apart right here. And then I've got to get this like a flypaper section here on both sides. I think it comes apart here maybe. Oh, these strings are so strong. I'm not 
going to stress about that side tearing a little on the edge. What they do with these is they're a thick, almost like a dental floss kind of string. And they are um, covered in a glue. And the only problem when this kind of binding happens in a book like this is if the paper is weak, like this paper is, it can be really difficult to keep them intact because they're glued. So you'll see there's glue. <clears throat> One second, let me just see if I can fill it up. There we go, okay. I'll show you the challenge. So right here, see, so these are glued down. These strings, these little tiny strings, they've got glue that glue them right through the holes. So that is the challenging part because when you try to pull your signatures apart, they won't come apart until you get these, um, these annoying little strings out. So I'm going to try to go at it with a tweezer and see if I can just peel up these bits of paper that are protecting these strings. So the fun kind of little things that you have to do when you're making books. Now the only reason that I'm going to this trouble is I am trying to retain some of the pages if I can whole to put as um, pages in the journal like folios. Okay. Let's see if I can separate any from the outside. No, I don't think so. They're still really bound in there. Okay. These strings need to go. <laughs> okay. Now I'll see if I can get them on the other side. Maybe use my pliers, maybe. <laughs> to get medieval. There we go. These ones are the tough ones. So last night I went on a lovely drive with the family and we had a um, picnic. We went to like a really nice old family pizza shop to get a pizza and threw a blanket down and went for a nice walk. And um, we saw some really nice northern tooth mushroom, well fungi on some maple trees that were really fresh and really cool to look at not an edible um mushroom or fungi but just a really cool looking one and i collected some black walnuts from the ground so that i can do some black walnut paper dyeing for those of you looking for paper in my shop i will be restocking shortly i'm just uh haven't had a lot of time to dye paper recently and i need to get a bit of time so there we go there we go lovely now i'm still going to when i use these i'm still going to reinforce this with washi tape for sure but that is a beautiful page so i'm happy to keep that one and this is what i do is i kind of go through um, and i decide like which of these pages will i make ephemera with and which will I keep as full pages. So this one I think we'll, I will use as ephemera because I'd like to use this image and this image, but there's a lot of text there. It's not as interesting of a page. And this isn't the kind of book, just because of the length of the story, <clears throat> I wouldn't be able to retain the whole story in the book. This is one that I will use as a page because it's got really nice images. And what I'll do is I'll kind of sort the pages out after the fact and I will... Um, kind of put them together in a story type of way of my own. So I love this image um, and this image and I'm going to keep that as a page. This one I think would be good for ephemera because it's some smaller images. 
that one could be a good page. These ones, because they're already like kind of torn, you know, apart. Um, well, that one is the only one that has anything on it. That will just become scrap paper. That will go to ephemera. These will go to ephemera, I think. This one, because it's, yeah. You want to save enough for ephemera because the thing is the kind of book I see this being is going to be it's going to have naturey stuff in it and nice I'm going to hand dye some nice green papers for it um, so I think I won't have any problem finding great pages for this butterfly pages like all sorts of nice books that I have that I can put lovely pages in this but I will want this for ephemera because um, you know that will allow me to carry the theme through the whole book. This is very cute. I like that image. And it's got a couple more. Yeah, I think that one will make the cut. Well, that's beautiful. You know, I'm going to take that one back, I think, and use those two instead finding a lot of nice pages. That one I think also warrants being in the book. How's just this one? See there's a lot of nice pages in this. So. Mm -hmm. Okay so these ones, this one I think I'll use for ephemera. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we need to kind of go through what I've chosen as pages, make sure I don't have too many. <clears throat> so I think for the two inch spine, I'm gonna do five um, signatures. So I'll see how many folios I have here and how I want to put them together. So this is from the beginning of the book. Um, this is also from the beginning of the book. That could be the second signature. Actually, one way I can decide how to do this, we'll be looking at the page numbers. So this is page 39. This is page 60. Page 62. <clears throat> Page 55, 44, let's grab all these up here. Okay, page 9, and I know that's the front, um, page 11. And this is page 18. So 11 and 18. One, two, okay, we'll go three, four, five. I think I need one more <clears throat> that I will use. There's this one, or there's this one. I think I'll go with this one, maybe. It's a tough choice. Yeah, I'll go with that one. <laughs> tough choices all around. So first folio, we're going to have this and this in the signature. So those are the first signature folios. And then this and this in the second signature. This and this and the third. Fourth. And fifth. Okay. So these are the book pages I will use from the book for the folios. Um, 
then this will be what I'm going to make ephemera out of. So I can, you know, kind of start to go through it and decide like what pages, um, or like what I want to make with these different images. So there's a lot of fun stuff here. See, now that I'm thinking, oh, I probably should use this in the folio too. Because I always like to use the front the front page. This one will need a lot, of, a lot more repair than the others, but that's okay. So let's go back to the folios. And I'll stick that on the front. And does that make me want to remove one from here maybe? Yeah, I'll do that. I'll remove one so that we have two pages from the book in each of the folios and I still leave myself a decent amount of material to make ephemera from. All right, so I need to pick a washi tape that I want to use down the center of these pages and start gluing it. So let me grab my washi tapes. <clears throat> I'm immediately looking at this one and feeling like, yes, this is a good one. Um, I have a very modest collection of washi tape, actually. I'm not a, I don't have a massive amount. I was thinking also something with a bit of orange in it, but I don't really seem to have anything too orange. Um, that's kind of orange, but it's wide. It's more pink than orange. This is good, actually, too. So maybe these three. Um, that would also be cute. I'm just wondering if it would be too wide. I don't want anything too wide. That would be cute because it's got, you know, the leaves that match kind of the pinky and the orange and then black. So we'll go with those maybe as the washi tapes that I will use for um, putting these pages together. So in this case, I probably won't make you sit through me doing this a bunch of times, but I'll show you how I do it, you know, with one of them. So this one's the most damaged, right? It's the most damaged page. Um, what I will probably do with these, because I'm already taping them together, I kind of estimate things. So these are really rough edges, this, this one particularly, but also there's, I've got room on either side so I could stand to trim it down. If you have an image that runs really close, you may not want to do any trimming. You may just want to kind of um, very minimally remove the paper on those edges. This paper is not very strong though, so I don't, I don't want the, the rough edges. And then you also have the opportunity here too, you know, if you wanted to switch around the order to which the images are going to show up, the pages, how like you want the pages to be. I'm going to put this back together, <clears throat> pardon me, as it was, and I will start with my green washi. Now my washies aren't super, like they're not old, so they don't have worn out glue, but I still do like to just run them over my glue stick like this, just to make sure that they are going to stay stuck down because it's not fun to have them kind of peeling up. That should be good. And I just bring it down, I go a little over above and a little under and just sort of smooth it down, make it a little taut. <coughs> Pardon me. Let me just trim it up nicely. Give it a press. There we go. Now you can decide if you want to do <clears throat> the other side, if you want to add another strip. I usually don't, to be honest, you don't need it. Like these, these tapes, 
are thick um like not super thick but they're also like you know they're more of a plasticky material um they're not a paper material so they're stronger and i'll be doing uh, a three needle binding through here so it's not like i'm going to be annihilating the tape or anything um i'd say it's stronger than your average paper piece so one side is completely fine you don't need to do both and then you also don't lose you know more of your your image right the other thing is to just you know go back and make sure you've trimmed your tape here neatly so yeah that is what i plan to do so i'm going to do that for all of these um and i'll probably make this journal along with you here and um i'll just kind of go through the progress as i as i make it so thank you for joining me and i will talk to you again really soon bye for now